Welcome to the Style Sports Hub, presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Hub podcast presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. I'm your host, Kyle Coppola. Thanks for joining us today. I want to thank our partners, Lake Center Home Care, Lake Sumter State College, and United Southern Bank. Our podcast is available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and more. So make sure to check us out and subscribe. It really helps us out. So thanks a lot. I'm joined here today by Jason Berryman, Hayden Berryman. We're going to have Mason Bush on the program later on today. I want to thank you both for coming on to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Looking forward to talking to you guys. Um, I wanted to talk especially about what you have going on because a very unique situation. You guys guys have cousins, of course, uh, Hayden and Mason Bush, both cousins. They formed a group called uh, Just Two Cousins Fishing, which is really cool. Can you tell us about the group? It's just something that we came up with um, because we raise money for them to travel around and and to do these tournaments. And um, that was just the name that we kind of came up with to start a Facebook page to get them out on social media um, to uh, share their journey with yeah. everybody. How long, uh, so so Hayden, how long have you been fishing for? Since I was about like five years old. Yeah, it's uh, about five years old. And then how, how long competitively? Um, Four years. Four years. So, so you've been fishing for four years and uh, you come up and of course, uh, you're you're the skipper <laughs> right. of, of yep. the team. Uh, tell us a little bit about that dynamic. How how I guess he got started in competitive fishing and how it's developed uh, so far. Uh, right. I guess he's headed into his freshman year of high school. Yep. So basically, I grew up right here in Lake County, and tournament fishing was a huge part of my life. Um, when he was born, um, I kind of shifted over more towards saltwater fishing, and we did that. And I think that kind of gave him the love of the actual fishing side of it, and once he got in middle school, um, I've always had my bass fishing, you know, in my back pocket that I've always loved. And we would go out in our saltwater boat and we started fishing some small tournaments and he really took a liking to it, um, fishing through the TSA, the Teen Sport Fishing Association. And um, we just jumped right in it, you know, full bore and got right back into the bass fishing scene. What's it like, uh, well, what was it like fishing with your dad um, and then getting into it competitively? Um, it's good memories. Good to have those memories, and I learned from him a lot. He teaches me most of my stuff that I know how to do now, and it's just fun. Yeah, uh, it, there's all sorts of all sorts of fun, fun, uh, fun things that you do out there on the boat. What are some of the best memories that you've made together so far? My, I have two. Um, well, obviously, just the sheer spending time with them. I mean, every day is is a great day, um, yeah. and the satisfaction that I, you know he gets out of being out there and um it really touches me you know for him to enjoy it like i did as a kid and still do um but for them winning the state championship here last year it was on the harris chain um that was a huge accomplishment and that pushed them uh into a spot where they qualified to go to lake hartwell in south carolina to fish for nationals um and then probably the other one would be um winning on Lake Okeechobee. They won in December on Lake Okeechobee and uh, just winning on a lake that's not your home pond Mm -hmm. um, was a great feat for them. Yeah, let's talk about that state championship because that was uh, was really exciting, of course. You guys formed the team and then uh, you're able to go out there and win a state championship together. What was that like? Uh, I guess uh, guess you guys were maybe down in that that, that championship uh, by a couple pounds and you, you were able to come back? Yeah, about it was like one twelve o'clock one, and on we only had like seven pounds going back into Harris because we were coming from Dora, and we just went to this one spot where we found fish with our glide baits um, a couple of days before, and we went in there. Mason caught a uh, six something, and then he caught a on um, five something. And that's yeah. That put us up there. Yeah, and you talk about the teamwork between those guys as well. Uh, I, I think I think it's so important as a team to play off of each other. I think maybe those guys have learned that uh, getting onto the boat and, and, and becoming a team. What was that like to see the teamwork between the two of them? It's awesome. I mean, it's obviously a struggle because um, you see one of them kind of getting down when they're having a tough day and the other one is, is having a good day. Um, and you always have to remind them that, hey, the net man <laughs> makes just as much as the catch man. You know, you want to support your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, it, it's, But it is tough, you know, watching one of them struggle 
uh, a little bit more than the other on any given day, but it switches, um, you know, and they do a really good job of supporting each other and keeping each other's heads up and staying yeah. in the game. And I would imagine that patience is part of the game. Of course, uh, mm -hmm. like anything, sort of like golf, we got a lot, a lot of things going on, uh, the Masters, of course, this week. But as far as patience go, how did you learn patience on the boat? Or are you still in the process of trying to learn patience out there? I'm still in the process. <laughs> I get aggravated, but it's you just got to keep your head down, keep fishing, just leave the pass behind. If you lost a fish, just don't let that – make you go down all day. Mm -hmm. What's your biggest advice to, to these guys when you're out there? He pretty much just said it. Just keep your head down. Um, know where you're going. Know what you're doing. Um, don't just go through the motions. You, you know, people, uh, you come home from a day of a tournament and, and a lot of people, oh, what are you so tired for? You fished all day. And fishing's a mental game it's, it's just as much as it is, you know, the physicality of it. Um, it's very mental because if you're not catching what you think you should be, where you should be, why and when, you're thinking of ten other things to do, and yeah. and it's it's extremely mental. Yeah, and, and obviously for for you being on the boat with these guys, you know, uh, trying to make sure that uh, that they stay in a in a in a good uh, you know position mentally is so important. Uh, where did you learn that? Uh, I mean, uh, you've been fishing a long time, I would imagine. Well, I wouldn't say I learned it because uh, <laughs> I, I don't have it. I, they can attest. You know, we we get on each other's nerves out there, um, <laughs> um, but I'm always there to support them. Um, I've I've fished since I've lived on the Harris chain since I was a kid and um, had the fortune to, I had little boats and could go out at every day after school. Mm -hmm. um, and I just always did my, my fishing. And then it grew into tournament fishing when I got into high school. And if you got over the, uh, if you, if you learned the patience, um, you got it licked. I mean, it, it's yeah. very hard. Yeah, and not just uh, not just that, but uh, you mentioned the boat part too. Uh, what I find interesting is is I guess there's there's guys that have all different kinds of boats and and competitions. Uh, sometimes the guys that have the the best uh, you know equipment or whatever like that. Sometimes they don't come out on top. Uh, can you talk about that and sort of? Um, I, I think there was a a kid that won with a kayak or came in second place with a kayak, right. uh, beat up kayak last year. He comes in second place. So I guess it's 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 based a lot off of skill. I would imagine. There's a lot of skill. I mean, obviously the um the boat and the electronics helps you greatly in locating and finding the fish. But I know the boys and I take pride, and we don't have the fastest boat. We don't have the um all the toys and the tools, you know, we've gotten more here just recently, but, um, the stuff that they've been able to win and accomplish in their short, you know, journey here, they, um, they've done it old school. Yeah. Um, they've done it without the fancy stuff. That's why I root for the underdogs in right. NASCAR, right? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to take a short break here on the sports. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Is pain or restricted range of motion keeping you on the sidelines? Get back in the game with expert orthopedic care from UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics provides robotic assistic surgical joint repairs and replacements, post-operative care, and inpatient rehabilitation services, all close to home, right here in Lake and Sumter counties. And for those unexpected injuries, UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics offers convenient walk-in and same-day appointments. To learn more or to schedule an appointment with one of their specialists, call 352-323-5665. Hey, everybody. We are back on the Sports Hub Podcast. Thanks for joining us. I'm joined right now by Mason Bush. We also got Jason Berryman, uh, Mason Skipper out there. I uh, want to welcome Mason to the program. Thanks for coming on, Mason. Thank you. Absolutely. So uh, Mason's been fishing for a little bit here, uh, not not as long as uh, Hayden, his counterpart, but uh, been fishing for a couple of years. Mason, how did you get into competitive fishing? Um, I'm going to say through Hayden and Jason. I didn't really, honestly, didn't know it was a thing, really. Yeah. What, 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 how did he get into it? Like, oh, how, how did that conversation start with him? So basically, Josh is my um, my nephew, um, his Mason's dad. 
and they were interested in fishing the TSA uh, club that Hayden was a part of, mm-hmm. and um, he was going to sign up and fish the TSA that year. And at that point, I was wanting to move Hayden up another level and fish the Florida Bass Nation, and that's a team trail, so you have to find a partner. And um, we had some – there were some options out there, but a lot of them there was age – uh, differences. So in my opinion, you'd kind of like, if you, if you get a good team together, you want to keep them together as long as you can, because they, they feed off of each other and they learn and, and it's just would be better to have a good, uh, tenure, you know, that they're fishing together. Um, so I reached out to Josh and I'm like, Hey man, um, I know it's his first year. Um, but what do you guys think about let's teaming them up and fishing Florida Bass Nation? They can fish together from now all the way until um, Hayden graduates. He actually graduates a year earlier than Mason, but um, you know they have a lot of years to, to fish as a team, and they were they were on board with it, and um, it's it's been a great deal. We work together great. Um, you know we we do fundraisers and get sponsors and stuff to help fund this thing, and mm-hmm. um, but uh, that's how kind of Mason got thrown into the mix. Mason, uh, we were talking off camera before we began um, uh, about your, your first competition as well. Can you talk, talk to us about that and how that all went down? Well, um, <laughs> so we were fishing some cypress trees uh, down in Winter Haven, and I threw up to one, and I got hung. Well, I thought I got hung. And then I looked down, and I was like, there's like a three-pounder swimming there. And then... I look and I see that my lure is in its mouth. So I set the hook and we got lucky enough to get it in the boat. It's awesome. What, what did that mean to see him get it in the boat and everything like that? I bet, I bet that was a lot of fun to see, to see his eyes light up and uh, got his competitive juices flowing, I'm sure. It was. It was, a, it was a very slow day that day, but that fish meant a lot as far as points go um, for them to start off their inaugural season with the Bass Nation. So it was a, it was a three three, four pound fish, but it was a huge fish in yeah. comparison to what they were going for. What, what a season it was too, because, uh, you know, you guys ended up fishing down at Okeechobee at, at some point as well. Um, massive lake, of course, down there, I guess, uh, it, it's, it's a very, um, everything looks the same, I guess, down there. So how, how, uh, how do you gauge a lake like that? A lot of it's experience time of the year, kind of having the wherewithal to know where the fish should be different times of the year yeah. and just time on the water is, yeah. is the biggest benefit and just which we don't get a ton of when we fish away from home like that but um mm-hmm. time on the water yeah it's a, it's an important uh important to sort of gauge uh things too i guess you, you guys do do pre-fishing which uh, mm-hmm. uh is very important as well what, what's the importance of, of pre-fishing sort of getting out there feeling feeling things around i guess it's kind of like practice in a way it is um You can go down a bank and catch fish, you know, just pick any given bank any given day and go down and catch a few fish. But to be competitive and fish against some of the competition that they fish against, um, you need time on the water to maximize the time that you're in the better areas. Yeah. Um, If you're not in those areas, you know, it's almost a waste of time in in our eyes as far as tournament fishing goes. Well, let's talk about the state tournament, the state championship that you were part of last year. You, you guys were down like three pounds. You you had a pretty good, uh, I think Saturday and you ended up, um, only three pounds down and you were in second place. So you're in second place. And then on Sunday you come out and then you have a massive day on Sunday. Uh, talk to us a little bit about that day and, and how you ended up catching. Like, I think you caught two fish, and you ended up as the champions. Well, Sunday, it started off slow. We had, like, seven pounds at, like, 1 o'clock. And then we decided to make a run where Hayden found some fish with his glide baits. And um, we went, idled up into that spot, and I pitched a couple and caught a 513. And then I... We came back around, and then I caught another one that was about six. And then you got back to the station, uh, or the, the weigh-in station, and um, I guess you guys decided to go last because you didn't uh, you didn't want to. Well, I think a lot of that was they they wanted to wait towards the end, but they did the directors and stuff kind of pulled the teams that were yeah in the top five. They pulled them aside and saved them for for the end of the day, and they did them in order, you know, fifth through one mm-hmm. and. Um, they ended up weighing in second to last, and um, they ended up winning by three, 
by five pounds. That's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, they won the state championship. It was t- terrific on the Lake Harris chain. Uh, and then you guys ended up also going up, uh, being invited to nationals, which is a, re- a really cool experience too. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about nationals and how that was? Well, it's a whole nother ball game when you're not fishing in your home state. And um, that looked really confusing to us, but we got lucky enough got on a couple of fish and we finished 37th out of like 120. Yeah. And that's, that's 37th out, out of like the best competition that there possibly is. Where was the na- nationals and what was that like fishing up there? I guess you guys got a, a bunch of uh, practice rounds on early before you, you ended up going out there. must've been uh, like going to Mars or something for the, it, for you it guys. Was, um, it was uh, in Hartwell on Lake Hartwell in South Carolina. Um, and they're right. I mean, down here in Florida, we're used to grass, grass, and more grass. And um, they don't have grass up there like we do. It's rock banks and mm-hmm. bluffs and deep water and clear water. Um, so you, you got to take everything that you pretty much do down here and leave it at home and have an open mind and, you know, learn a whole new skill set up there. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, what's what's the difference between down here and up there? I feel I feel like obviously you get grass down here. So how do you fish that differently? So up there, um, those fish they move a lot. Um, they have what they call. There's a few lakes in that region mm-hmm. that they stocked with um, blueback herring, and those herring are constantly moving, and that's their main forage. And those fish are just accustomed to moving mm-hmm. and. Um, and then you also throw in their spotted bass, which is uh, a cousin to the largemouth, and it's a little bit different to fish for than a largemouth. Um, and then the, just the fact that you have to cover – here in Florida, if you move around too much, if you're around fish, you want to stay around the fish. You don't want to jump around. Up there, you run and gun. You hit points um, because they'll push the herring up on points and the mm-hmm. fish will come up and feed on them, and you just have to get on a good rotation of points. Um and that's that's kind of what we did to catch their fish. I mean, you're you're throwing a topwater bait in 30 feet of water, and trying to give yourself the confidence that that fish is going to see it, you know, yeah. from 20 feet down and come up in 30 feet. And yeah. but it's just different. Something that we would never do, you know, down here. Mason, for you, what what's been the the most fun part about teaming up with your cousin? Um, get to learn more every day, and um. I honestly just like doing the tournament stuff, but I'm glad that I got a good partner. Yeah. Uh, what well, uh, what is uh, what does it mean to you really to 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 fish with your family? I mean, it's really a family thing when when, when you think about it because mm-hmm. I mean, you could team with anybody, but to team up with your cousin and and it's just it's a really cool deal, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, it's better than having to go searching for a partner whereas <laughs> I just got one right here. Yeah. And we we also talk about finding the right partner. Um, you know, not all partners, I guess, uh, work out together. Yeah. Uh, but to find the right partners is so important. It seems like these guys work really well together. What's the importance of having a good partner out there? Uh, I mean, like I said before, if it could be your best friend and you just don't fish well together, um, you could have somebody that you're arch enemies with, but you you guys have really close fishing styles and. And it just seems to, to mesh and work well. And fortunately, these two get along like they're brothers. Yeah. And they both fish well together. They both complement each other as far as um, when one's having a bad day, the other one, you know, seems to pick up the slack and vice versa. And whenever they're both having a good day, that's the days that we've yeah. seemed to do the best. Yeah. And, and and you guys obviously are state champions. You, you're you doing all sorts of, uh, of really cool things around, and you're looking forward to uh, to the end of your season. And, of course, you're going to start the high school season, which is coming up here in, in a couple of mon- uh, months um, as well. Uh, you talk about uh, TSA as well. I wanted to talk about TSA for a moment. Um, uh, can you tell us what TSA is? And for a lot of kids out there that may not know what that is, how do they get involved in fishing? So TSA is uh, it's it stands for the Teen Sport um, Fishing Association. Um, we're fortunate enough here in Lake County we have a a group of TSA. I think there's five or six counties in our area: Volusia, Orange, Osceola, mm-hmm. um, Seminole. I think I'm hitting them all. Um, and and they all have their TSA. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're very fortunate in our area to have. Uh, 
a family that runs RTSA that does a great job. Um, the Morris is Dean Morris, mm -hmm. his wife, Peggy Morris, their family. And we have some really good volunteers that do a lot for these kids. Um, Lake County has the biggest TSA group. I think we have like 54 kids this year. Um, TSA is a group that um, you don't necessarily have to have a boat mm -hmm. to join and to fish. They line up captains for tournaments. We have one tournament a month, uh, two meetings a month. Um, and all these meetings go towards your points for the end of the year, angler of the year. Um, your tournaments obviously do the same. Um, to be part of the TSA, you have to, I think it starts like 12 years old, um, and it goes all the way up to a senior in high school. Um, some of the, uh, you, ha you have to maintain, I think it's a C average. Mm -hmm. You know, they check your grades whenever your report cards come out. You have to show them your grades to they make sure that you're staying up with your schoolwork and you have to uh, do two community service um, events throughout the year or the mm -hmm. season. And the season coincides with the school year. So the season starts in September and goes all the way through April. We just had our last season tournament um, this last weekend. And then there's a state championship. If you qualify to fish a state championship, um, you, you fish against the other counties on whatever lake is chosen this year. That state championship's on Okeechobee. Yeah, you mentioned uh, as, as well uh, Dean Morris, and uh, he, I guess he means a lot to a lot of people. Um, what does he mean to you, and, and why does he mean so much to you? Dean is just – there's not many deans in this world, and this world needs a lot more deans. Um, he does a lot for these kids, and he doesn't have to. Um, but, it, you know, he's just – he's a special individual. And, um, man, we, we couldn't be more grateful as a group of parents that are involved with the TSA to have Dean and Peggy. Um, you've got Chet Wagner that helps us out. Mm -hmm. Scott Nethro helps them out. I mean, they're, they're a great group of people. Um, they just do a lot for the kids um, and look out for them. And it's, it's a fun deal. And like I say, it's, it's not hard to – to be a part of, yeah. um, you know, they, they, they take new members with in September, whenever the school year comes around and, um, it's just a fun deal. I'm glad we're a part of that. Yeah, it seems like a really cool deal to be a part of. So, um, Jason, I want to thank you for coming on to the program. We're going to get Hayden back in here. We'll talk a little bit more fishing with them and uh, what's to be expected uh, once they hit high school. So uh, looking forward to, to, the, to the rest of the season. And um, uh, thank you for everything you do for these kids. Awesome. Thank Absolutely. You. All right, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back on the Sports Hub next. Are you ready for your future to take flight? Whether you're graduating high school or looking to level up, Lake Sumter State College offers affordable degrees and certificates that will punch your ticket to success in a rewarding career. Plus, with programs like Direct Connect to UCF, your opportunities with LSSC are endless. So, what are you waiting for? Join us in Leesburg, Claremont, Sumterville, Four Corners, or online. Learn more at lssc.edu. Hey everybody, we are back here on the Sports Hub podcast talking with Mason Bush and Hayden Berryman, who are a part of the team uh, Just Two Cousins Fishing. And uh, obviously you guys are cousins, which uh, is really cool. Um, can you describe to us what, what what is it like to have that kind of bond between uh, between cousins and being out there fishing together um, at, at really uh, the middle school's highest level um, uh, with, the, with the Bass Nation? What is that like? Um... I like fishing with this kid. We we make jokes, we joke around, but when we get on the water, we just we put our heads down, we fish our ways, and we just make everything work out. Uh, obviously, uh, Hayden's been fishing a little bit longer than you have, uh, Mason. Well, what are some of the things that Hayden does that that you like, or may, maybe there's some certain things that you pick up on that Mason does? Um, uh, who, who's better at what? I guess out there. Well, I'm good at, better at like fishing slower. And that's kind of an advantage. It depends on what you're fishing, mm -hmm. like grass or whatever. Yeah. Well, what is the advantage of fishing fast and then fishing slow? What is what is the difference between that? Fishing slower, you're putting, you're keeping the bait in the strike zone longer. If depending on if you're fishing grass or whatever, the fishing faster. There's sometimes if you're fishing too fast, you might just that bait just might blow right by that fish, and I, fish might not even want to eat it or not yeah. notice it. 
Uh, you, you guys, um, you go to uh, Umatilla Middle School uh, right now, and then uh, where, where do you go, Mason? You Round go Lake to, Charter. Uh, Round Lake Charter. So you guys, uh, you guys are coming up on high school. Of course, uh, you're going to be entering high school. You got another another couple of years before you enter high school. But uh, the game's about to change, I guess. Once you get to fishing on the high school level, what uh, what's going to change for you as far as jumping from middle school to high school? It's going to be more competitive. There's going to be is there's going to be a lot more good kids. There's good kids where we're fishing right now in the junior division, but they're moving up with us, so mm -hmm. it's just going to be more competitive. What, what I thought was really cool, too, is that uh, you make your own baits as well. Uh, can, can you tell us about how that got started and, and sort of uh, where that's at for you right now? Well, I saw a YouTube video, and I thought it was cool, and I it was getting to Christmas, and I asked if I could get an airbrush and an airbrush gun for it. And um, I got it for Christmas. I went out there painting the bait, and it was it wasn't the best looking bait. <laughs> and I we painted a couple, and um, I was kind of laid off of it. Didn't really touch it for like a half a year to a year. And then I went out there one day, and I painted one. And I, when my dad got home, I showed him. He's like, "You painted that." And then since that day, we have our little own little business. That's awesome. Uh, what's your business called? Donk's Custom Baits. Why is it called that? <laughs> because when I was little, I, they used to call me Donk or Donkey. This is what they used to call me. <laughs> and you created the business out of it, so you got a bait business going on right now as well as being a competitive fisherman, which is a, a really cool thing uh, that you got going on. Mason, um, what's the importance of, of, of uh, choosing the right bait out there as well? I mean, obviously, there's a, there's different baits for different you know types of things that you're doing out there. Uh, what's the important of, uh, importance of the bait? You just got to find what they're eating, like when you go pre-fishing. And then when it comes to tournament day, you want to throw that bait that they're eating. And you want to stay, like, you want to find that area that the fish are sitting in. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why you do pre-fishing. What's, uh, what, what's your favorite lake to fish on? Do you have any favorite lakes in particular? My favorite is our home lake, Harris, the Harris Chain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Lake Harris is a really cool lake out there. Um, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of great things. Of, of course, you guys uh, have sponsorship as well. Uh, coming to the end of your season, as, as well, um, are, are you get, how how are you preparing for next season? Like, what 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 are you doing? What do you get going on? And how are you preparing? We're just we want to make sure we get our sponsorships. Well, our biggest sponsors. We thank all of them for our, their support and everything, and just. Get ready for the next season. What's what's the best part about fishing with each other? What uh, what's the best part of, of like fishing with this guy right here? You can definitely learn a lot from him. Um, I didn't know much coming into it the first day, so after a while, I learned a bunch from him and Jason. What, what's what's been the coolest part about fishing with him and seeing him learn as well? Because he came in, he mm -hmm. he hadn't f fished a lot of tournaments until a couple uh, until a year ago, a year or two ago, and then. You know, you're kind of the teacher in a way. <laughs> I would, I would imagine. It's just cool seeing how he's progressed through the years, seeing how he's done. He's came from a long way. What do you guys hope to accomplish in the future as well with each other? Like, where do you go from here? Obviously, you finished thirty seventh at nationals. That's really good for a first time team, I would imagine. Yes, sir. Um, we're. I wanted to go to college. Wanting to do that be a team in college and just finish the year out in um, high school and then go into college that'd be really cool so you guys got a lot a lot of a lot of fun stuff going on i want to thank both of you for coming on um we, we got a magazine article coming out on these guys so we'll uh we'll be seeing a lot more of these guys in the uh the near future as well i want to thank you guys again for coming on the program I want to thank you thank your dad uh jason berryman for coming on josh is here as well off camera so i want to thank them for coming on as well um I, I want to thank our partner, UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics. I'm Kyle Coppola. I want to thank our uh, sponsors, Lake Center Home Care, Lake Sumter State College, United Southern Bank, and, of course, our podcast available on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and more. So make sure uh, to like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot. I want to thank you guys one more time. We'll see you on the next edition of the Sports Hub Podcast. This has been the Style Sports Hub, presented by UF Health Medical Group Orthopedics.